The linear Stark effect refers to the experimental observation that when a hydrogen atom is placed in a weak uniform electric field, the angular momentum degeneracy at each principal level is broken, at least partly, in a manner that is linearly proportional to the applied electric field. As we'll see, it's only linearly proportional if the electric field is, as I said, weak. And as it happens, using first-order quantum mechanical time-independent degenerate perturbation theory to show this degeneracy breaking, specifically at the first excited level, is one of the most common problems in degenerate perturbation theory. In this video, partly because it's such a common problem, but also because the Stark effect was important in the history of quantum mechanics, we're going to work through that problem. Let's get into it. Given that the hydrogen atom energy eigenstates are also angular momentum eigenstates, as with so many other problems in quantum mechanics, we stand a good chance of simplifying our mathematics by choosing the electric field to point in the z direction. We therefore have this perturbing potential, and as per our knowledge of time-independent degenerate quantum mechanical perturbation theory, we must evaluate this matrix and then diagonalize it in order to get the corrections that we're looking for, and to discover what states those corrections actually apply to, because again, they'll probably be linear combinations of more than one. The only non-constant part of this matrix element is the z factor, so we can focus in on this matrix specifically. Now the evaluation of this matrix element can be made much shorter in part by using wigner eckhart theorem, so we need to work out how to express z in terms of spherical tensors. Turns out that's pretty easy to do with ordinary spherical harmonics. We arrive at this matrix element, r is a rank 0 sphere tensor, so we can ignore it in our wigner eckhart theorem analysis. Of course, we'll have to re-include it when we get to the point of actually doing integrals, because such a factor of r definitely will change things. This is our usual wigner eckhart theorem statement, and these are the selection rules that come out of it. If we apply our special case to these general selection rules, we arrive at these specific ones. Those immediately zero out most of the elements in the matrix that we need to evaluate, but it does leave five left over that satisfy all those selection rules. Fortunately, we don't have to directly compute five matrix elements, because it turns out we can restrict this even further by remembering that Z will only have non-vanishing matrix elements between states of opposite parity. So L equal to one on one side and L equal to zero on the other side. That reduces the number of matrix elements we have to deal with to just two, at least directly. However, they're complex conjugates of each other, so we really only have to do one integral. These are the hydrogen atom wave functions that we need to do it. Plugging those into the integral that we need to calculate immediately gives us this. We can then separate it by variables and then start working out the integrals. It's relatively straightforward multivariable calculus, and the answer is negative three a naught, where a naught is the Bohr radius, of course. If we put that all together, we arrive at this matrix, and we're ready to diagonalize. This is pretty easy because we actually only have to diagonalize this 2 by 2 submatrix. Straightforwardly, we arrive at these eigenvalues and these normalized eigenvectors, which means our actual energy corrections are given by this matrix here, specifically the diagonal elements of it. In this matrix, we do in fact see that part of the degeneracy is broken. We've got one energy level that's raised and one that's lowered, but it's not totally broken because not only are these two still degenerate, but but they didn't even receive a correction at all, let alone equal ones. At this point, we can more clearly see why it's called the linear Stark effect, at least at the theoretical level. If we're dealing with weak enough fields for only this first order correction to matter, then the experimental energy shift is in fact linear in the applied electric field strength. Now, of course, people can calculate the linear Stark effect for other excited energy levels, and you can also calculate to higher orders. Second order is common, but this calculation alone is enough to make it clear what the Stark effect game is as far as theory goes. Perhaps I'll go over those more advanced generalizations in future videos. And with that, we're done for now. I hope this video is interesting. Thanks for watching.